Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about the Journal of John Woolman. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to give a like, subscribe, and or comment, that the channel can continue to grow. Now, in this work by John Woolman, um, we get a very interesting view about his life, uh, about who he is, how he lived his life, um, and his spiritual life, when it comes to God, when it comes to Christ. Now, John Woolman lived in America where you had Puritans and Quakers, um, and he was a Quaker, and this journal really gives an account of his personal journey, his spiritual journey uh, of going through life, um, you know, dealing with sin. Um, so we, got a, we have a lot of personal examples, personal excerpts where John Woolman within this journal, he's talking about his moral battles uh, or, you know, his daily interactions with people, with nature, with animals. There's one example within this work where um, he kills a mother bird. Um, and then in his remorse, he kills the baby birds of the mother bird. He climbs this tree and kills the baby bird of the mother bird because in his mind, when he was young, uh, that was one way to not let the baby birds suffer is to kill them um, because he killed their mother. And, and that was something that, that's, that's very wicked. Um, you know, and then he, he later, you know, he talks about within his journal how, you know, God says that, you know, we have to be kind and, and take care of, you know, the animals of the earth. Um, you know, God calls us not to be cruel. Um, yes, we do eat animals. I know some people will be like, well, wait, you know, we eat animals. We have cattle and things like that. Um, there, there's one thing to kill animals um to raise them for food and and you know kick, kill them swiftly but this instance of john woman killing these birds it's there's no point right uh it's not a swift like if you're going to kill an animal you kill it swiftly you're not trying to make it suffer you kill it swiftly and and so you can have it eat it for food but in this instance with the birds it's just senseless killing he's just pounding them to death, um, which is, well, quite wicked and, and quite dark. Um, so within this journal, we get these these internal battles within John Woolman, with him uh, navigating his wickedness and his battle between light and darkness, where, you know, he was a Christian or a Quaker, or he was raised within a Quaker family, um, and Quakers, within this work, John Woolman tells us about the Quakers, um, how they had prayer meetings, how his parents were Quakers, how his family was Quakers, how they were very serious about the religion. You know, Quakers and Puritans, they took religion very seriously. If you really messed up, I mean, again, these are the people, um, you know, that, that had the Salem witch trials. We're talking about during the era where, when Christianity and religion uh, was so serious, uh, was such, was at a level where, you know, you, you killed people for being witches. Um, and so, you know, John Woolman, he really gives us these excerpts of these, these internal battles where, you know, when he was young, he wasn't close to God and he didn't know uh, God too well. Um, and he was, you know, battling internally, trying to figure out his place within this world. Um, and ultimately after, you know, he was really sick and he came close to death, he, you know, he, he was talking to God and he was praying and he's saying, you know, if you heal me, I'll change my ways, I'll, I'll do better. And, and ultimately he does get better. He does become a Christian, um, and he does pursue the Lord, uh, with all of his strength. Um, and you know, he has all these, um, these excerpts, these examples of him, you know, relying within the Holy Spirit. And, you know, in Christianity, there's something that's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
um, in the Bible, you have several different instances where the Holy, the Holy Spirit rests on people or, or dwells within people. Because there's another uh, idea, concept within the Bible that, you know, humans are temples and the Holy Spirit uh, desires uh, and, you know, wills to live within uh, these living temples. And, and John Woolman, within these excerpts, within these examples, he's talking about exactly that, how um, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, um, he's able to, um, you know, pray for certain people, um, talk to certain people at certain points uh, when their souls might be on the line. Because the whole point of, of the gospel, of the Christian gospel, is to save souls. You know, Christ died for, for our sins, and the whole point is to save our souls from eternal damnation. And John Woolman, he's, he's thinking about that. Um, how, you know, God will tell him who to talk to, who not to talk to, at what time to talk to this person, at what time not to talk to this person. Um, and, and that's very fascinating. It's very interesting that he took, takes it in that direction uh, because John Woolman here, you know, he, he's very serious about his faith. Um, and, and, you know, he has lots of questions about ethics and morals. There's this whole situation about this receipt that he had to write for, a, a sale of a slave for a friend of his and, and morally uh, internally it bothers him that he's participating within this sale he's just writing the receipt he's not buying or selling the slave but just because he's writing the receipt it really bothers him internally that you know he's involved in the sale of a human being uh, and, and that you know forces him to think about slavery and, and his journal has a lot to do with with slavery and how even if a slave is well taken care of, uh, he's not particularly happy about that because, you know, he believes that, you know, a man shouldn't be sold to another man. A, a man shouldn't have possession of another man. Now, yes, we can say that uh, th there is slavery in the Bible and the, and the Bible talks about slavery. But again, the slavery that exists within the Bible and American slavery is very different. And the slavery that exists within the Bible, the slaves can buy themselves out. Of slavery it's kind of like an indentured servitude where you serve someone for you serve someone to pay a debt you become a servant um, a slave of someone for a period of time to pay a type of debt um, and, and you're not considered less than human you know the, the slavery that, that's talked about in the Bible you're not considered less than human uh, you know your slave yeah, well you know your master is not beating you and and, and, and can has ultimate authority over you can kill you um however he wishes um th there are you know when you when you look at uh the pentateuch or or or, or the the, f the first five books of the bible um you know you look at exodus leviticus uh, deuteronomy uh you look at numbers um you look at those books of the bible um, it's it's very very specific on and certain types of laws um, and how we should uh, you know treat other people what we should eat what we should do um, and when you get to the parts about slavery um, it really uh, it's very different when you when you study that it's very different from American slavery where you know slaves could be killed at any point they were property considered less than human. Um, they were they were considered to be just as valuable as cattle, um, and so the, the John Woolman, you know, he talks about that, he, and he he is known as to you know to be like one of the very first uh, people to be an abolitionist to go against slavery in the United States, uh, in the colonies, you know, to talk about you know it's not right, it's not right, even if a slave is being treated well, um, you know. Even if, you know, when slaves are being treated poorly, um, in every circumstance, he believes uh, that, you know, that slavery should be abolished. And, and again, the, the the example of him writing the receipt, it really, and again, John Woolman, he does, he's not just speaking about, it. these are things that, that affect them internally, uh, that affect them internally. And a person who is that close to God, um, who is looking for the moral, um, the moral compass, the moral arc, the moral connection of the of you know of the universe, because because God is perfect, because God uh, knows all truth, 
and and to be a man of God and to to be uh, involved with this type of wickedness is just not it it doesn't it cannot exist together. Um, and so in his journal, he talks about that. He talks about uh, where he draws from that, and he believes that it's not Christian. It's not Christian for one man to to own another man, and 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 fundamentally. The Bible has a single message that all men are are equal. Uh, that's that's the very fundamental message from the beginning of the Bible. Uh, we have the first human beings, Adam and Eve, and and everybody that comes after that are the children of Adam and Eve. Um, when you think about human beings, and so uh, without even putting into specific words, the Bible tells us that we all come from the same beginning, um, again and again. Um, and the Bible even confirms, you know, that, that God wants to save the world. I mean, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the, the idea that all men are created equal, that is, that is an idea that is central uh, to the Bible. So John Woolman, being a man that reads the Bible, being a man of God, we can put it together that he's just not okay with slavery. And it just doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't go side by side. It can't coexist. Um, uh, people um, who have slaves and people who love God, um, it, it, it is a moral battle um, that, that just can't coexist. Now, of course, a lot of Quakers did own slaves, uh, but, you know, later uh, Quakers, you know, were the first to start to talk about the, you know, abolition um, of slavery. Um, so, so it, it's very fascinating that John Woolman, you know, this movement, this idea uh, of his, it comes from his connection uh, with God. So that, that's something that, that is to be taken note of within this journal. Um, other things that he writes about, he talks about wealth uh, and the pursuit of wealth. Now, John Woolman was a businessman. Um, you know, he, he knew what it meant to, to try to become successful, uh, try to make money within this world. And he comes to the conclusion that you know, the more wealth you have, the more burden you have on your back, because uh, the richer you are, the more money you have to manage. You know, if you have a million dollars, two million dollars, uh, you know, you can't just really I mean, you can just put it on the, in a bank account. Uh, but it, it, that's really not how you should manage a million dollars. I mean, it, it's just going to sit there and the bank is going to really love you because the bank is going to um, lend it out for people to use while, you know, you earn uh, you pretty much don't earn anything from that million dollars. Uh, so if you have a million dollars or if you have a billion dollars, it's it's a huge burden. You have to manage it. You have to invest it. You have to grow it. You have to uh, figure out something to do with it because you can't just sit on it. Um, you know, you have to, if you buy property, you buy houses, you buy land, now you have to manage it. You have to trim it. You have to you know, if you buy lots of land, you have to hire people to manage it or, or to, to, I don't know, if it's crops, grow crops, if it's lend it out or become a landlord of some. So the more you have, the more money you have, the more property you have, the more burden it's on your back to manage that property. And it's not easy to manage a lot of properties. You might not being do, you might not do the physical labor of it all, but the mental the mental task of managing a lot of money, it's not easy because, uh, you know, you can hire people to manage it for you, but then you have to keep track and make sure that those people are not taking advantage of you. Um, so th that's an idea that, that, that comes up uh, within this journal by John Woolman. And he also says that it's, it's really, um, this is not, you know, integral to, um, I guess we can say, um, the pursuit of money, right? Let's say that the pursuit of money, it just doesn't, um, it puts limits on your pursuit of God, right? The more you pursue money, the more you pursue property. Uh, that's another central idea of the Bible. Whenever Jesus encountered a person who was extremely wealthy, uh, that person always has a hard time, uh, you know, to, you know, the, the rich one, the, the rich young ruler uh, within the Bible, uh, he couldn't let go of his money for Christ. Uh, and so that, that's a massive problem with, within a lot of people uh, when they pursue money, when they want money, 
uh, they seem to lose their passion for God. And that's the idea that John Woolman is getting at within the journal also, is that if your first, you know, love is money, you forget about God. And, and you know, a person can't have two rulers, a person can't have two masters. It's either you have God, you have Christ, or you have money. You have to choose one or the other. You can't have both. Because if your God is money, you're going to work for money 24 hours a day. That's going to be your God. Um, so, and if your God is God, money is not going to be the driving factor of your life. Um, so, you know, we definitely have to keep that in mind. Um, so that that's one of the ideas that, that John Woolman writes about within his journal. So this journal is, is packed filled of, of excerpts and, and, you know, deep reflections and deep concentrations and, and, and you know, contemplations of life, uh, the, the pursuit of things, um, his journey with God, um, his journey of, uh, you know, being born in a Quaker family, um, moving away from the faith and then coming back to the faith, um, and also ministering and, and preaching and, and, and talking to other people uh, and even other Quakers about how, you know, um, the the idea of slavery and having slaves does not co coexist with the idea of Christianity and following Christ. And, and also, you know, the, the pursuit of money, how that can be corrupting. Um, in terms of deeper meaning, in terms of analysis here, um, this journal is, you know, you, you have to really, um, it gives you close insight to how Quakers think and how they move and how they saw the world. Um um these people um you know people um uh, like John Woolman they definitely uh, didn't just see the world as you know we're here and that's it you know we exist and that's it uh, they believed in something much greater than themselves they believed in the life that was coming that uh, was was you know life didn't just end on earth um, and so uh, they they ask they ask some deep questions about their reality about their lives. Um, they ask some very profound and deep questions about uh, you know how do we exist with with morals and ethics uh, that coexist or or that that outline or that resemble the Bible and how do we follow Christ um, because uh, you know there's a lot of things that happen on earth. Um, uh, in regards to money and, and wickedness uh, that, well, the Bible in many ways is kind of like a mirror. So for the Quakers, the word of God is like a mirror. It, it points out the wicked things that we do because a, a lot of times uh, people do wicked things and if it never gets pointed out, you just think it's normal. Um, and so, so there's deep reflection, deep reflection about life, about our existence, uh, and his journey through life and understanding his place within the world and understanding his calling in God. Uh, so, you know, the Journal of John Woman is also, you know, known to be like a spiritual book uh, that, that really explores um, uh, Christianity and in and, and the deepest corners of Christianity when it comes uh, to being a, a man who's walking uh, with the Holy Spirit, with God, um, being... Um, you know, directed in the most um, minimal tasks, you know, when to speak to certain people, when not to speak to certain people, uh, when to preach, when not to preach, and just how to move uh, about in his community uh, to do the will of God. Uh, so it's a very interesting read. Uh, so please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. Uh, that's all I had to say about this work. Um, and um, I will see you in the next video. Uh, help the channel grow, leave a like, leave a comment, and um, yeah.